Hi there, and welcome to another one of my CR123 videos. This video is going to deal with incomplete combustion, a topic I know a lot of you struggle with, and that's just because you do not understand a few of the definitions. So let's get right into it. This system, our fuel being fed at 100 kilomoles per hour, is 40% benzene, 30% CO2, 20% CO, and 10% carbon. We also say that we have 20% excess air fed to the system and we have a wet flue gas leaving the system. Now, the important thing from here is to think about what we're going to have in C coming out. Obviously, with air being fed, we should have nitrogen leaving the system. And because we know we're talking about incomplete combustion, but more importantly, because we have excess air being fed, we'll also have O2 leaving the system. Seeing that it's a combustion problem, we expect CO2 to leave the system. Can there be CO leaving the system? The answer is yes. Because we have incomplete combustion, we expect CO to also leave the system. But this brings me to the last two components that can leave the system as well. And this will be the benzene and the carbon. It is possible because it's incomplete combustion that we'll have both these two species leaving the system as well. And here we have a complete composition of our exhaust gas. But we've left one component out, haven't we? It's a wet exhaust gas, so there can also be water leaving the system. With the information given, can we solve the system? We can't. We need to know something about the amount of the fuel converted into the combustible products and also the ratio of the CO2 to CO. So we need two more things. We need a degree of combustion and a conversion of the combustibles. And let's say we're given that the degree of combustion is 90% and the conversion is 95%. Can we now solve the problem? Possibly. But the problem is, we need more information. This does not give us everything we need to know. For instance, the degree of combustion tells us the ratio of CO2 to CO. But what is it based on? Is it for all the carbon entering the system? Or is it just for, in, for some of the carbon entering the system? So we need to understand whether we're talking about all the combustible carbon or all the carbon, if we talk about the degree of combustion. And in our example, we're going to make it based on all the carbon. And in the same way, we need to know something about the conversion. Let's say I tell you that the conversion is based on the benzene only. So we say we have 95% conversion of the C6H6. So this 95% conversion is only related to the C6H6N, which equals to 40 kilomoles per hour. Now, if we're given a 95% conversion, then 0 0.95 of this 40 is converted into combustibles. Whether that is CO or CO2, we'll talk about that later. But we know that 95% of that is converted, and thus 2 kilomoles per hour of the benzene is leaving the system. The 30, 40 minus 38 gives us 2 kilomoles per hour leaving the system. Now, guys, I'm not talking about whether it is leaving the system as water, CO, CO2, or combinations of the above. I am just saying that the conversion is 95% for the benzene fed to the system. So the conversion and the degree of combustion is separate from each other. It's important to understand that. I could also have said that the conversion is 95% of all carbon. That means all the carbon coming into the system 95% of that is combusted. I could also have said it's 95% conversion on combustible carbon. Then it would only have been on the combustible species 
entering the system and they were converted in a ratio of 95 percent all of them so 95 percent of this 95 percent of this and 95 percent of this converted not into co not into co2 but into combustion products so both co and co2 and water please make sure you understand this go read through the notes again make sure you understand this that the conversion is based on something if it's not given as a based on something you need to make an assumption as to what it's based on typically in that case you would say 95 percent conversion of all the carbon same year we did with the degree of combustion where we said all the carbon please guys yet again last time i'm going to say this make sure you understand this and there i've highlighted it for you so that you can remember that the conversion is based on something and this calculation 95 percent of the benzene in converts and that is 38 kilomoles per hour converting now as i've done so many times in the past i'm going to use a table the one given here to solve this problem so there on the left hand side i have all the components coming in I'm in this example going to break the components up into combustible carbon, non combustible carbon, hydrogen, and then use all of that information to calculate the theoretical oxygen needed. We know that the CO2 will not have any combustible carbon, and the benzene, CO, and carbon will not have any non combustible carbon. We can now calculate the amount of carbon that is combustible in all three the combustible carbon species giving us 240 kilomoles of carbon coming in that is combustible as part of the benzene remember six moles of carbon for every mole of benzene coming in and 20 kilomoles of combustible carbon as part of the co and 10 kilomoles of combustible carbon as the coal coming in the non-combustible carbon in the CO2 is 30 and the amount of hydrogen in the CO, CO2 and carbon is zero. With 240 kilomoles of hydrogen coming in as part of the benzene, the same calculation as we did for the carbon, seeing that there is six kilomoles of hydrogen for every kilomole of benzene fed to the system. The theoretical amount of oxygen needed for the combustion of the CO2 is obviously zero, seeing that there's no combustible carbon. For the carbon fed to the system, it would be 10. For the CO2 fed to the system, it would be 10 as well, which, is get, which we get from taking the amount of the moles of CO coming in divided by 2, as it will only react with half a mole of oxygen and the theoretical oxygen needed for the combustion of the benzene is given by the amount of carbon coming in multiplied by one plus the amount of hydrogen coming in multiplied by a quarter or divided by four seeing that one mole of hydrogen will react with a quarter mole of oxygen to form water giving us 300 kilomoles of oxygen theoretically needed to combust all of the benzene remember this is the theoretical oxygen required and it's got nothing to do with this conversion term that we had at the top. We can tell you these to give us 270 kilomoles of combustible carbon and 30 kilomoles of non-combustible carbon or 300 kilomoles of carbon in total, 240 kilomoles of hydrogen and 320 kilomoles of oxygen theoretically needed. Now for the next part of the problem, we need to figure out how many kilomoles of CO and CO2 is leaving the system? Now, we were given a degree of combustion based on all the carbon of 90%. I'm going to sp spend a minute or two on this. I want you to understand this. And I've had so many questions in the past regarding this. In this example, after we've run the whole combustion problem, we go and we calculate experimentally the amount of CO2 and CO leaving the system. And we found that 90% of the 
of the carbon, all the carbon coming into the system is leaving the system as CO2. That's what this degree of combustion tells us. Now it's got nothing to do, and I mean absolutely nothing to do with this conversion term. It's got nothing to do with the amount of the benzene that is converted. We say all the carbon coming in, 90% of that leaves the system as CO2. If you were told that 90% of all the combustibles leave as CO2, then you would have taken into account everything that is combustible and calculate 90% of that to find out how much CO2 is leaving. If you would have told that the degree of combustion is 90% based on the benzene and not all the carbon or the combustible carbon, then 90% of this combustion term, the benzene that is combusted, will leave the system as CO2. So read carefully the information given to you regarding the systems so that you can understand what to calculate, how to calculate it, and to get what you need. Okay, so in this example, we said 90% of all the carbon is leaving the system as CO2. There's all the carbon coming in. It's both the combustible and the non-combustible carbon. So we know CO2 out must be equal to 0 0.9 multiplied by all the carbon coming into the system. And that is 270 kilomoles per hour. So there we have it. Our degree of combustion is 270 kilomoles per hour of CO2 leaving because we have 90% degree of combustion based on all the carbon, the 300 kilomoles of carbon fed to the system. And yes, it is related to the kilomole of benzene that is combusted, the conversion. But it has got nothing to do with this value in terms of calculation, calculating the amount of CO2 and CO out. This gives us the amount of benzene out. Some of it converted to CO, some of it converted to CO2. We don't know exactly how much has gone where yet. All we know is that 270 kilomoles per hour of CO2 is leaving the system. In this table, I'm only going to focus for now on what is happening to the fuel species. Remember, there's also the oxygen and the nitrogen that we can worry about. Also, the water being formed. I don't want to worry about those now. You guys should be able to calculate them by now by looking at complete combustion and taking into account the percentage conversion. I just want to focus on what is happening to the carbon and the CO and CO2 being formed. So we know the amount of one of these in. So there's the total carbon in. There is the carbon in for the CO2, for the CO, for the carbon as carbon and for the benzene. Now, we know that the carbon that can be, con the carbon that's consumed based on the conversion is 10 kilomoles of C to and 2 to 8 kilomoles of benzene. How do we get to that? And that is by taking the 40 kilomoles of benzene in multiplied by the 95% conversion, giving, giving us 38 kilomoles of benzene consumed with 6 moles of carbon per mole of benzene. Then we have 2 to 8 kilomoles of carbon consumed. And we know none of the CO2 is consumed because it's non-combustible, which means we'll have 30 kilomoles of CO2 leaving the system from the CO2 in. We also know that we will have 10 kilomoles of CO2 leaving the system from the C in. Lastly, we can calculate the amount of CO2 leaving the system from the benzene being consumed. And for every mole of carbon that's consumed for benzene, we will have one mole of CO2 forming. Now, did we consume any of the CO? 
How do we know how much CO2 is going out? How do we know how much CO is going out? And this is easy. We know that the CO2 going out must be equal to 270 kilomole because we calculated that we have 90% of all the carbon converted to CO2 as given by the problem statement. This means that these four values should add up to 270. And currently, they are adding up to 268, which means that two kilomoles of the CO consumed to form CO2. I need to get to the 270 because we were told that the degree of combustion is 90% based on all the carbon fed to the system. And if all the carbon is 300 being fed to the system is converted in by 90% for the degree of combustion, then we have 270 kilomoles of CO2 leaving. The only way we can get to 270 is if all this, all this, all this leaves as CO2 and two kilomoles of the CO converted to CO2 as well. Guys, you need to read the problem. Read the problem to understand what is given to you. We could have been given something else, but then we would have had a different answer. So in this video, the important bit is this information here. We got told that we have 95% conversion of the C6H6, the benzene. And here we calculate what happens to that. Then the other important bit we have is the fact that 90% degree of completion based on all the carbon. It is important to understand what that means. And that in the end meant that we had all the carbon being fed, 90% of that converted to give us 270 kilomoles of, per hour of CO2 leaving the system. We then need to balance the whole system so that we have this 270 kilomoles of CO2 leaving the system. And this we could only, could only achieve by having two kilomoles of the CO converted to CO2 as well. I really hope this example helps you. Remember, the most important thing you need to learn from this example is that you need to read the problem, understand what you are being given. If you don't understand, try and figure out. See you again next time.